guys, you heard from uh, Auburn's assistant coaches today, uh, first time in first time in a while we've heard from those guys, uh, seven assistants other than the coordinators. Heard a bit from new uh, offensive line coach Herb Han Brandon, who obviously has a tremendous influence and relationship with Gus Malzahn. Uh, he spoke with him quite a bit, uh, I think all of us did. I uh, heard quite a bit from Herb, he's always uh, an entertaining personality. Yeah, uh, the, the guy's a chef. And uh, now he likes, he, food. He likes mm -hmm. food, and uh, he's a very good uh, cook, uh, from what we've been told. But uh, the the big thing is his relationship with Gus Malzahn and how much they trust each other from their two years working together as co-offensive coordinators at Tulsa. You know, as many of you know, Herb Hand brought in that West Virginia approach, that spread offense, and really helped out with that zone read attack that you see now at Auburn and in previous stops for Gus Malzahn. And now they're marrying the two offenses together again. They're adding some different things and. You ask Brett Lashley about how what type of influence Herb Hand has, and he talks about it just being a group effort. But it sounds like Herb Hand is a guy that Gus Malzahn maybe trusts more than others uh, than in that room, and he trusts Brett Lashley obviously. But Herb Hand's a type of guy, probably because of his personality, and they're so different, and they joke at each other that <laughs> and they poke yeah. fun at each other that Gus Malzahn's going to listen to him and, and listen to his input. So it's very interesting to see what they do not this spring but in the fall as far as preparation and what the game plan looks like and Herb Hand did talk a little bit about their relationship and nicknames he said he used to call him Jimmy Neutron uh, Boy Genius and my favorite one was G Unit um, he says he doesn't call him either any of those anymore he just calls him Coach Malzahn but I find that I hard to believe because no. the guy's a uh, he says he enjoys life so I'm sure if he enjoys life, he's probably still poking at Gus Malzahn. And he gets away with it, as Tim Horton told him. Yes. Yes, he does. And, uh, and Wes, we heard quite a bit from uh, also some other new coaches, Travis Williams being one of them, Cody Burns another, both former Auburn guys uh, who joined this staff, uh, kind of the, the youngest coaches on their respective sides of the ball. Right. And, uh, and Travis inheriting a very young linebacker, core Cody inheriting a very young receiver. Yeah, both of those guys are, are really excited uh, for, the, for their opportunities being so young to, to be on this coaching staff uh, at a school that they played at. So I think that helps on the recruiting trail a lot for those guys because they can they can tell the players, like, look, I played here, I know what it's like, and they can kind of walk them through that, much like Damian Craig did. Um, but uh, I spent more time, I guess, with, uh, with Travis Williams today. Um, you know, nobody's really expecting much out of the linebackers this year after after losing Chris Frost and Casanova McKenzie and Justin Garrett. Um, but I think that the players are kind of embracing that underdog kind of role where really untested and, and inexperienced. You got you got Trey Williams there who's going to be the, the leader of that uh, unit. But outside of that, you know, just a, a lot of younger guys, you know, he spoke highly of Jeff Holland and uh, really spoke uh, pretty highly of, Je of uh, Deshaun Davis. He's been really impressed uh, with his progression uh, this uh, this spring. I'm gonna wait till this uh, squeaky car gets by. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so you know, I, I think, uh, like I said, not a whole lot of people are expecting much out of the linebackers. On the other hand, spoke with Rodney Garner. I think it's kind of the opposite there. I think that they've got yeah. Carl Lawson, Montrevious Adams, Byron Coward. Uh, they just signed uh, two five-star guys, and Marlon Davidson and, and Derek Brown. So a lot of expectations on the defensive line. And it's just been a problem for this defense to get into the quarterback. And obviously, they've, they've kind of restocked that, that defensive line. And, um, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think that Rodney's just looking to, to take that next step with a lot of these guys and see if they can progress and, and uh, really turn that defense around. Because this, and this is one thing that I brought up to a lot of the coaches today, is that Auburn, you know, since, especially since Gus Malzahn has gotten here, Auburn used to be more of a defensive school, kind of hang their hat on their defense. Uh, but with Gus Malzahn, it's been more about the offense. So I think that the other side of the ball, they're just trying to get that edge back and, and trying to to be, you know, kind of kind of more of a more of a defensive team and not have to rely so much on scoring points. Yeah, all the time. And, and you mentioned a couple of players there who we've, we've already seen uh, have had impacts this spring and have already moved up depth chart a bit this spring. Uh, Marlon Davidson being one of them, who we saw today uh, with the first team defense. Now, some some of this is a little bit of trial and error, contingency plans, and those sorts of things. Uh, but seeing a true freshman already in that position, yep. uh, certainly a good sign for him. Now, yeah, it's over Byron Coward, who uh, I'm sure some fans may walk away disappointed and say, "Oh, well, how come Byron went that?" Well, again, it could be some trial and error here, it's, and it's also March. It's a long, long way to go. It's not like Byron's not going to have a significant role. And uh, by all accounts, from Rodney Garner, from uh, Kevin Steele, from Gus Malzahn, everything's been quite positive. Uh, having to do with Byron Coward. Uh, I've spoken quite a bit with uh, with Tim Horton about the running back battle and 
exactly how much of a battle it is. And and he says, that, look, Rock, like everything we've heard thus far, that Rock Thomas is still very much a part of the picture, uh, but that Javon has matured, uh, that Javon Robinson is still clearly a very durable back uh, and is very high on his own abilities uh, and what he brings to the table. Uh, but, yeah, that Javon is a workhorse guy that has shown that and that Rock and the questions of dur- if his durability persist uh, and that that's not going to change between now and the season, really, uh, but that what is going on on the field right now and will probably continue well into August and they don't expect to name a starter until then because they're both really talented guys. They bring something different to the table and that the H-backs are being integrated in and doing quite a bit as well. So we heard quite a bit from, from all those guys. So I spoke with Wesley McGriff uh, just about the, the changes from the NFL coming back to the college game. Uh, Brandon, I know you spoke with him about uh, his recruiting background in particular. And uh, Coach McGriff is definitely bringing a, a, a veteran's presence and the NFL presence that he, he brings to the table with this defense. And he has prior relationships not only with Kevin Steele, but uh, with Herb Hand when they coached together at Vanderbilt for a year. So there's there's a lot of different uh, connections on this staff, including some of the new faces. Uh, and, of course, some of the old faces as well. As, like I say, Tim Borden, Scott Fountain also spoke with him. Uh, not too many changes on the special teams as, as we expected uh, this spring. So it's a little bit of insight from across the board with the various different uh, assistant coaches today. Uh, first time in several months uh, that we got to hear from uh, a lot of these guys. And I know that's usually a thrill for us, Brandon. Probably won't get to talk to them until August. Yeah. And yeah. maybe if they make a college football playoff. So are we going to have to wait yeah. that long to know what the crime dog nickname comes Probably from? Probably so, yeah. 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 Wesley McGriff. Wesley McGriff did not want to tell me the story in the background between, between, uh, behind his nickname of crime dog. He said it's a long story. I asked for the Cliffs notes, and he said he wouldn't even give that. So I'd like to hear it. He said it's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing bad. He said, but <laughs> and I mentioned McGruff, the crime dog, and yeah. that got a Fred McGruff. positive response, and yeah. then it just yeah, yeah mystery. It's a mystery trapped in an enigma. <laughs> we'll track. We'll track that story yeah. and try and, find, and get to the bottom of it for sure. <laughs> this is my last video with AL.com. What? This is my last one. This is it. So you guys have fun. What? But he's a traitor. But what? I'm gone. I'll see you guys. That's your goodbye. (laughs) What? (laughs) 